everyone i am jisha welcome to e content development center majlis arts and science college puramanur and this module i just want to take yet another topic which is none other this coinages from feminism i ought to take a class which was a continuation of a previous one in the previous class then i have discussed what feminism is and the types of feminism the three waves of feminisms and the writers which are more familiar to their contributions with this feminist criticism in this module i just want to focus more on the coinages and i hope that after this class the students are able to discern on feminism and they are too much familiar with this coinages and about the connections with the topics and which is so much uh, helpful to you while attempting any competitive exams let's move on to this topic in detail we can start with the first feminist writer simon de beauvoir simon de beauvoir was a french philosopher novelist and feminist and she was so much familiar with second sex and this text is considered as a manifesto of modern feminism the underlying philosophical structure of this text the second sex is grounded in the self other relationships described by the great yet another writer sartre classical essay on existentialism we all are familiar with the term existentialism but the emphasized placed upon the gender introduced a theme that are not present in their the times okay and before going in depth of this writer we just move on to a quote said by simon de beauvoir one is not born but rather becomes a woman as the starting point for a detailed phenomenological descriptions of becoming a woman you know that the definition of a woman and for of an attack on all those myths of this eternal feminine that reduce women to a timeless essence and rather than that in simon de beauvoir's this particular text the second sex is a powerful at the same time it's talking about a woman to grasp freedom and this independence and insists that the economic independence is such an essential kind of thing for a woman in society and at the same time to keep the existence in freedom paradoxically she tries to say that uh, what happened to the woman is that the feminist at the time of writing and believed that some form of this socialism would lead to women's manifestation it was not until in 1970s that she openly identified that the feminist it's a kind of a movement and becomes involved in a campaign for the right to contract pensions and this abortions and you know that Simon de Beauvoir was a very famous in this first wave feminism that we have discussed before in the video and let's move on to yet another feminist writer it's none other Virginia Woolf she too in a same way and Virginia Woolf was the first writer who introduced individualization in the feminine society and she was the first writer who wrote literature for this female in the time of feminist sense and it's all about feminism because she wrote more about about the problems of women the women are faced in present society she had a brilliant mind and she goes beyond all those conventions and created no distinction between genders her vision is based on the emancipation and independence of women as men she wants every woman to read against uh, their situations and at the same time react against the unbearable conditions 
she wants education for women and wanted them to have an opinion and expressions the problem of the women is that they don't have any kind of opinion about a subject and the same topic was dealing in her novel a room of one zan she wants women to write independently to think and at the same time to uh, select or to live independently like men in her essay uh, the three unions it's an another essay by the same writer in this essay too she describes how women can prevent this kind of situation and to when and they are excluded from education the professions and this public spheres this uh, essay is talking about a relativity or relatively neglected work of wolf that deserves greater attention and it is a center to an understanding of wolf's feminism her linking of this private and public and how this structure of this patriarchal society leads to a militaries uh, to concern or to lead a kind of mili militaristic kind of attitude on women and which was changing arguments for today's world in this uh, text a patriarchal society was portrayed women in what manner and how we want to come out from this kind of a patriarchal system it's talking about and i hope that it's clear to you about this particular kind of a writer virginia woolf and let's move on to another one that was none other mary wollstonecraft she was an another feminist uh, she uh, make wonders through her writings and the term patriarchal refers to the power relations in which the women's interested uh, interested in and subordinated to the interest of men and this power relation takes many forms from this textual division of labor and the social organization of this uh, what a pre creation to this internalized norms of this femininity by which we live we are living in a patriarchal kind of society and feminist by which they are living is in a way connecting the people and in patriarchal discourses the nature and the social role of women are defined in relation to a particular kind of norms which is male the society the patriarchal society was created by male a male chauvinism was working over every phases of this society and this particular kind of notion was discussed in the feminist practice and post structuralist theory by this writer mary wollstonecraft and you just keep it in your mind that the term patriarchy is it's connected with mary wollstonecraft judith butler another feminist writer and more than a feminist writer she is from america and a philosopher and her most uh, inspiring and the pivotal work uh, was had uh, many in her collection and uh, one thing was that hegelian it's a kind of a philosopher hegel and the term was simply arrived from hegel a person from a german philosophy okay and uh, in this uh, hegelian strands in contemporary the french philosopher but she, but she tried to uh, produce a kind of fame with her work gender troubles and the lady was so much familiar with the most um, discussed or uh, most debated work gender troubles judith butler uh, what she means throughout this novel is that but lo the meaning of gender is inseparable from the culture and the political intersections with which it uh, it's considered and, and how it was produced and maintained and it does not derives naturally from this biological sex of this individual and how it applying and how it applying the works of austin and the speech of act theory to be dominant of sexual difference 
and uh, in throughout Butler demonstrate that the production of gender is a matter of performativity is a term coined by Butler. According to Butler, the performativity of gender is considered as, as something which is closest not refers to a single act but to a long and repetitive process through which the discourse produces the gender effect it claims to name. For Butler, then there can be no gender outside or a period to the discourses that names it. So, I just want to uh, remember you one thing, the performativity is a term, it's too much associated with Judith Butler. Okay, that is something that we want to always uh, study in the progress in the progression. Let's uh, move on to another one. It's none other, Julia Kristeva, a very uh, famous person coming in the same waves of second wave feminism, and in the same uh, person had made too much contributions into the field of feminism. Okay. Then uh, let's move on to this particular person in detail and she was uh, familiar with this collection Polylock, a collection of her uh, earlier essays on this semiotics and the novel appeared with uh, some of this modifications and all and then trans translated as a desire in which modifications was translated as a desire in language in 1918. And this particular text especially its emphasize on Bhaktian dialogism and intertextuality. And uh, this parody and at the same time the maternal body and uh, the uh, figures that was so much connected with structuralism and feminist theory. The Power of uh, uh, Horror, which was in 1918 and another publication by the same writer, she introduces the concept objection. Objection is somewhat important as feminism is concerned and common resulting from the need in patriarchal societies to regard this maternal body as a threat to this development of normative subjectivity. And throughout this essay, and at the same time, the year 1980s and 1990s, a Christina wrote on a psychoanalysis and social alienation and nationalism, Proust and uh, the themes like the host of other things. So objection is somewhat associated with feminism and that is something pivoted in all the times. Elisha Walter was the last, last writer coming in the last wave of feminism and she was born on January 21 in 1941 as an American literary critic, very pivotal uh, while discussing this kind of a topic. And she is one of this uh, founder of feminist literary criticism in United uh, States academic developing the concepts and practice of gynocritics. The term gynocriticism was so much familiar with this particular kind of a person that is Elaine Showalter. She is well known and respected in both academic kind of activities. At the same time, uh, we already mentioned that she is a person from the third wave feminism and popular culture field. And she has written and edited a number of essays and some essays are always discussing with lots of interpretations and lots of debates. Showalto's best known works are Towards a Feminist Critics which was in 1979 The Female Malady and Woman Madness and English Culture in 1830s and 1890s and in 1983 and the sexual anarchy and gender of culture at this fine d cycle in 1919 and its histories. Chawalto was chair of the judges of this prestigious Brit British literary awards and this man booker international prize 
and her essay the towards a feminist politics and uh, she wanted to divide it feminist criticism into two sections and which is so fam uh, familiar to everyone the woman as reader and at the same time the woman as writer a woman as reader this way in which a female reader changes the apprehension of a given text and awakening it to the significance of this sexual codes then historically grounded the in, uh, inquiry which proves the ideological assumption of a literary phenomena that is the one thing and the second one is the woman as writer or gynocriticism the term the gynocriticism was so much connected to Helen Showalter then Showalter coined the term gynocritic and to describe the literary criticism based in a feminine perspective probably the best description Showalter gives to gynocritics as in this particular essay the towards a feminist poetics in contrast to this angry or loving fixation on male literature and this program of gynocritic is to construct a female framework for this analysis of women's literature and to develop a new model based on this study of female experience rather than the adapt a male models and theories this two are somewhat important at the same time she introduced the three phases the feminine feminist and female and feminine phrase so Walter sees this first phrase taking place from uh, what a roughly kind of thing and she calls this a feminine phrase and declare that it was a characteristics or characterized by women in an effort to equal to this intellectual achievement of a male culture then another one is feminist phase what is feminist phase the second phase feminist phase follows from 1880 to 1920 wherein the women are women are historically enabled to reject uh, this kind of accommodating posters of femininity and add to use a kind of literature to dramatize this ordeals of wrong womanhood which was started in 1818 okay then the third phase is female phase which was which is no you know what is female phase it's one of the self discovery and this writer says that woman rejects both imitation and protest the two forms of dependent dependency and turn instead to a female experience as to a source of an autonomous kind of an art and expanding the feminist analysis of culture to a form and the techniques of literature and by concluding uh, this kind of topics we can conclude in such a manner that we may conclude that her views on feminist poetics are intelligent and largely devoid to rhetorical kind of extremity and confidently provocative kind of things I want to complete this uh, class with a quote from another kind of a feminist, Helen Sixon. She uh, writes in a text that I like something and at the same time I write women and women must write women and men, the men so only as an oblique consideration will be found her of man and it's up to him to say that there is masculinity and femininity are at this will concern us once men have opened their eyes and seen themselves which was a very beautiful kind of a quote done by helen in this kind of text the love of medusa i hope that the class was so much helpful to you to write about this theory feminism and the writers and I hope that you don't have any kind of doubt and keep studying and thank you so much.